What's going on, Duelists? It's your boy Nick, bringing you today on the channel a combos and test hands video for my Volcanic deck profile for the March 2024 format. For those of you new to the channel, welcome. My name is Nick. We do Yu-Gi-Oh! content mainly focused around rogue and casual decks alike. If that's the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! that you're interested in, then I highly encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of my uploads. We are currently working our way to 1,500 subscribers, and I need your help to get there. So with that being said, Volcanic. I'm going to leave the profile that I uploaded last week linked in the description below. So if you haven't checked out the profile, feel free to watch it now before you dive headfirst into these combos. Now the fi um, excuse me, the Volcanic deck that I built is mainly focused around the FTK variant of the deck, which has been seeing more and more success as of lately. Um, I've seen a lot of topping deck lists pop up at regionals around um, you know the United States and North America. And honestly, I think the fact that this deck is able to have such a consistent access to their FTK is insane. But also at the same time, this deck doesn't need to FTK. Like, this is one of the few FTK like focused decks that I've seen that if it can't do the FTK, it has a plethora of other ways to kill your opponent, which is very useful and really, really consistent. Um, so some of the combos I'm going to be showing you are how to achieve the FTK. And it is an FTK, although technically you kill your opponent on their draw phase, but it's for all intents and purposes an FTK. Um, and I'm also going to do some test hands with you guys, so you guys can kind of see more or less how the deck um, functions. It's a 45 card list, like I said, the list will be linked in the description down below. Uh, but without uh, any more disruptions or introductions, we're going to be diving into the first combo. And this combo is going to be a three card combo, technically two and a half. All you really need is the trooper and the blaze accelerator. The shell is pretty much just discard fodder. Um, but, you know, it could be any card, but realistically, to achieve the full combo, you want these three cards. And there's other variants of this combo. It really just depends on what your opening hand looks like. But you can easily pivot into the FTK, depending on what was opened. Um, but for the first combo, I'm going to be showcasing these three cards specifically. That's Volcanic Shell, Volcanic Trooper, and Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. So, uh, with that being said, we're going to dive into the combo. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off by Normal Summoning Volcanic Trooper. And upon Normal or Special, it allows us to add a Volcanic card from the deck to our hand. We are going to be searching out a copy of Volcanic Rimfire from the deck to our hand. And... With that being said, what we're going to do next is we're going to activate our copy of Volcanic Blaze Accelerator from our hand by sending the original Blaze Accelerator to the graveyard from our deck. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use Volcanic Blaze Accelerator's first effect to a special summon a Volcanic Monster from our hand during the main phase. We're going to use that to special summon our copy of Shell um, directly to our side of the field. And then what we're going to do is we're going to link that Shell off immediately to make ourselves a copy of Relinquished Anima, because we do need access uh, to a Spellcaster monster for this combo. And that'll make sense as to why momentarily. Now that Shell's in our graveyard though, we can activate its effect uh, to pay 500 life points to add another copy of Shell directly from the deck to our hand. And then you guys will start quickly realizing how this gets crazy. Uh, so now that we've used the first effect of Blaze Accelerator, we're going to go ahead and use the secondary effect of our Volcanic Trooper uh, to discard a card from our hands. So we're going to discard the Volcanic Rimfire here, and that's going to allow us to special summon a bomb token to our opponent's side of the field. Uh, it's a thousand attack, a thousand defense. It's a um, level one pyro monster. And so now they get the, the bomb token on their field, but because we sent our Rimfire to Grave, we're going to activate the Rimfire effect to, uh, when it's sent to the grave, we can banish itself to then send a uh, Pyro Monster from our deck to the graveyard, which in this case is gonna be our copy of Emperor. Then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use the, hmm. We're gonna send our Anima and our Trooper. Now this is why it's important that we had a Spellcaster uh, because we're gonna use those as material to special summon from our deck on a non-activated effect our copy of Awakening of the Possessed Greater Inari Fire. Now when this card is special summoned you have to send a face-up spellcaster and a level 4 or lower fire monster you control to the graveyard. Uh, so we went ahead and did that and when this card is special summoned you can burn our opponent 
uh, for the attack of a monster they control, non-target. Uh, so since they, we gave them the bomb token, we, they're going to burn for their first amount of damage this turn, which is 1,000. Because they, they burn for the attack of what the token is. Then what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the secondary effect of our Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. We've already used the first effect of special, but both of the effects on Blaze Accelerator are soft once per turn, meaning they're once per turn per copy. So we're going to use its effects. We're going to send a level 1 Pyro Monster from our deck to our graveyard to then target a monster the opponent controls and destroy it. So we're going to send Rimfire, and then uh, we're going to blow up the bomb token that we gave the opponent. Keep in mind, when that token is destroyed, they take 500 additional damage. So now they're, they've burned for 1,500 damage so far. And now we're going to use the graveyard effect of our Rimfire, the secondary grave, because Rimfire can use both of his graveyard effects in the same turn. Um, we can actually banish a Blaze Accelerator card from our face-up field or graveyard, and if we do, place a Blaze Accelerator continuous spell trap from our hand or deck face-up uh, to our side of the field. So we're going to banish the Blaze Accelerator we control to then place our other copy of Blaze Accelerator to our field. Note that because we're placing it off the affected Rimfire, we don't have to meet the activation condition for the Volcanic Blaze Accelerator itself, meaning that this is how why a lot of the Volcanic decks only play the one original Blaze, Accelerator because it's just a brick. You don't need to play like three of this and three of this. It's not required because Rimfire helps you cheat out the um, additional copies of this card through its effect uh, without needing to pay the cost, um, which is really, really cool. So keep in mind they've already burned for 1500 damage, but now we're going to use the first effect of our Blaze Accelerator because it is a soft once per turn. So we're going to special a Volcanic from our hand again, which in this case will be Shell. And now we're going to link off the Shell and the greater Inari fire to our graveyard to make any link two of our choice. Really doesn't matter, but for the purposes of this combo, we're just gonna go ahead and make ourselves a copy of Sunlight Wolf. That'll trigger the graveyard effect of our Inari fire. When it's sent from the field to grave, we can search for a um, spiritual fire art card from the deck to our hand. So we're now we're gonna grab our spiritual fire art Kurinai. And then since now our shell's in the grave, we might as well use the other uh, graveyard effect of our shell. Searching us, paying 500, searching us the another copy. And now at this point, they've already burned for 1500 damage. We have plenty of pyros in our graveyard. We can now facilitate the summon of our emperor from our grave by banishing three pyro monsters. So we're going to banish a shell, the greater Inari fire, and a shell from our grave to special summon our emperor. Note that at this point, there is four banished pyro monsters at meaning that they're going to burn 500 for each through the effect of our Emperor. So that's an additional 2,000 damage. They've already taken 1,500. They've taken an additional 2,000 now, which will bring their life points down to uh, 4,500 if my math is right. Hopefully it is. Let me know down in the comments below if my math isn't mathing. <laughs> and then off Emperor effect, we're going to go ahead and set ourselves a copy of Volcanic Emission, which is crucial for the FTK. Uh, keep in mind the opponent would be at 8,000 life, so they've... They've taken 1,500 between the Inari Fire Burn and the Bomb Token Destruction, and then they've taken an additional 2,000 um, off of the Emperor Effect on Summon. So yeah, they'll be at 4,500, because they would have been at 65 plus 2,000, or minus 2,000, that puts them at 4,500. And then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to set the Spiritual Fire Arc Kurinai and pass turn. And note, they're at 4,500 life points right now, correct? On their draw phase for turn... Unless they have a response or an, any kind of active thing they want to activate. We're going to activate our Volcanic Emission. Targeting our Emperor. And then uh, it's going to burn our opponent equal to half of its attack. Emperor's attack is 3100. So they're going to take 1550. Which should bring their life points down from 4500 down to 2950. If my math is correct. And then at resolution of Volcanic Emission. We are then going to activate our Spiritual Fire Arc Kurinai. Tributing our Emperor and then burning them for the attack of the monster tributed, which in this case is 31. Uh, if their life points would be at 29.50, if my math is right, this is lethal. Um, this particular FTK combo does 81.50 points of damage, uh, which is basically game, assuming they're at 8,000, obviously. And this is all done during their draw phase. So again, this is why it's called an FTK. And it's pretty straightforward to get to. It doesn't really involve that many cards and not too long of a combo. Um, and that's pretty much how you do the Volcanic FTK. So I just want to uh, cycle everything back really quickly because I want to show you guys how this FTK can be done with a different opening hand. Because like I said, the you can pivot into the FTK quite easily depending on what it was that you opened with. So now, 
And what we're going to do is we're still going to start off with Trooper. Trooper is pretty much the starter, but uh, aside from Trooper, we're going to go ahead and have Fire Ejection. Rather than instead of using the um, Volcanic Blaze Accelerator, we're going to replace it with Fire Ejection. And then we're also going to have Rim Fire in this case as well. So our first combo was Trooper, Volcanic Blaze, um, and... Ooh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Oh my god. <laughs> Shell, excuse me, duh. Uh, but now this combo is going to be Trooper, Ejection, and Rim Fire, respectively. So, this is how we can pivot into the FTK using these three particular cards. So we're going to go Fire Ejection, sending a Pyro Monster from our deck to Grave. And then that will allow us to special summon a bomb token to our opponent's side of the field. We're going to be sending our copy of Volcanic Shell. Keep in mind, they already have a bomb token on their board now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to normal summon Volcanic Trooper, activate Trooper's effect to search for a Volcanic card. This is where we grab our Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. It will then activate our Volcanic Blaze Accelerator, uh, sending our original Blaze Accelerator as cost from the deck to grave. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go Blaze Accelerator's first effect to special a Volcanic from our hand, which will be the Rimfire in this case. Then we're going to go ahead and link... Mm, how do we want to do this? Yeah, we're going to link off the Rimfire for our copy of Anima. Triggering the Rimfire Graveyard effect, banishing itself to then send a Volcanic to our Graveyard, which in this case will be our copy of Emperor. And then... Keep in mind, like I said, they already have a bomb token on their field. What we're going to do here is we can go Shell Effect and Grave, paying 500 to search another copy of itself. So we'll go ahead and grab ourselves another Shell. We can now go Trooper Effect, discarding the Shell we just searched to give them uh, the opponent another bomb token. So now they have two bomb tokens, keep that in mind. Then we're going to go Shell Grave Effect, again searching another copy of itself to our hand by paying 500. We are then going to go Anima and Trooper, sending those to the graveyard so we can special summon from our deck our Greater Inari Fire. We're going to burn the opponent with Inari Fire's On Summon Effect, um, which in this case will be a thousand for one of the tokens. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use Volcanic Blaze Accelerator's secondary effect to target one of the tokens, send a level 1 Pyro from our deck to Grave, and then destroy that token. So in this case, we're going to send Rimfire. We're going to pop that token. They're going to burn for 500 damage. So they're already at 1,500 burn, just like in the first combo. Then we're going to go Rimfire's Graveyard effect, uh, banishing our Blaze Accelerator to then place another Blaze Accelerator from our deck face up in our Spell Trap Zone. Again, like I said... Because you're placing it with the effect of Rimfire, you do not need to um, send an additional copy of Blaze Accelerator to Grave. So keep that in mind. A lot of people don't realize that. And then the combo just proceeds the same way. We're going to go Blaze Accelerator's first effect, Special Shell. Then we're going to link both Anari Fire and the Shell off for, in this case, a copy of Sunlight Wall, for example. Triggering the Graveyard effect of our Greater Anari Fire to search for our Spiritual Fire Art card to our hand the, yeah they'll still have a token on their field but again in the grand scheme it really doesn't matter they still burn for the same amount of damage uh, then we're going to go emperor graveyard effect to special by banishing one shell two shell i guess we could banish all three shells for this instance to bring out our emperor and then they're going to burn for two thousand because we have four banished pyros so again the opponent will already be at the 4500 life point threshold then off Emperor's On Summon effect, in addition to the burn, we're going to set Emission to our field. And then we're going to set the Kurenai and pass turn. On their draw phase, they're already at 4,500 uh, life points because they've taken 1,500 between the Bomb Token Destruction and the Greater Anari Fire Burn. And then they've also taken 2,000 off the Emperor Summon effect. So they're at 45 already. But then in the draw phase, we're going to burn them for 1,550 with Emission, which should bring them down to 2,950. And then we're going to finish them off with the Spiritual Fire Art, Tributing Emperor, to burn them for the remaining 31, which, like I said, is uh, 8150 uh, points of damage in total, and that is lethal. So that is the second combo of how to do the Volcanic FTK. Yeah, it's a three-card combo, but again, in the grand scheme, it's super easy to access and very easy to pivot into depending on what you've opened with. 
Um, so it's very consistent. And on top of that, even if the FTK fails, you still have a lot of pressure on board with just the setup. Um, you know, the opponent's going to be burning themselves for 500 points every time they special summon a monster via the effect of Emperor. Um, and then it's just, like, they're going to be slowly killing themselves. You know, if somehow everything fails on our crackback, if we get a turn 3, we can just resummon Volcanic Emperor again. And then the additional burn damage with the uh, Pyros will have banished at that time will more than likely finish them off as well. So, like I said, the deck is very consistent and the, so is the FTK. Um, I just thought it was like a super cool combo I wanted to show you guys because I know a lot of people aren't really sure how the FTK is done. And like I said, I've already shown you two different ways of how to achieve it. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to pile shuffle the deck very quickly. We're going to do some test hands. I don't want to make this video terribly long, but hopefully you guys are enjoying the content so far. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, uh, comment down below what you guys think of the deck and of the FTK, if you think it's consistent or not, or if you think it's just copium. I want to hear you guys' thoughts, honestly. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, this deck is a lot of fun to play, and it's not, like I said, it doesn't require a lot of thought either. Like, you know, it's not a very convoluted FTK. You see how I just did it two different variations variations of it in under 15 minutes um it's extremely easy to follow and understand and it's kind of hard to stop i mean yes hand traps will disrupt it but i mean i think uh, most of that combo can push through one hand trap you know your opponent's going to need multiple hand traps to stop that ftk and even if they do successfully stop it this deck is still able to pump out so much additional gas and pressure that they're likely to the opponent's going to be in a pretty tough spot come their turn so uh, we went ahead and shuffled the deck a few times. We're going to cut, and we're going to play this hand out like we're going first. So, uh, like I said, if we brick, we brick. That is the nature of the game. Uh, we're going to top deck Wanted, Fire Rejection, Wanted, Bonfire, and Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. So even if we lost the die roll and we're going second, we have a hand trap to slow the opponent down. That also burns them if the card we stopped leaves the field. Keep that in mind. Um, yeah, this is a very amazing hand. I have no complaints with this hand whatsoever. Again, we're going to play this out like we're going first. And let's lead things off with Fire Rejection first. We're going to use that to send a copy of... Shell to our graveyard. And then we're going to produce a bomb token to the opponent's field. 1,000 attack and defense, level 1 fire pyro. And if the token is destroyed, they take a 500 damage. Then we're going to go Graveyard Effect of Shell, paying 500 of our own life points to add ourselves another copy of Shell. Very simple effect, yet effective. <laughs> then what we're going to do, we're going to go Wanted, Seeker of Sinful Spoils. That's going to go ahead and grab ourselves a copy of Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch who just so happens to be a spellcaster, by the way, so we can still actually pivot into the FTK line with this hand we opened if we wanted to, which we might end up doing since we're going first anyway, especially if the opponent hasn't hand trapped us yet. I mean, there's no reason not to try and go for it. Uh, then we're going to go Bonfire. That's going to grab us our copy of Trooper. And now you can kind of see how this is starting to shape up into a pretty good setup. Uh, we're going to Normal Summon Trooper, Trooper Effect to search for a Volcanic card. Which will grab us our Volcanic Blaze Accelerator. Then we're going to activate our Blaze Accelerator by sending the original Blaze Accelerator from our deck to the graveyard in this case. And there it is. Like I said, remember the opponent already has a bomb token on their field through uh, fire ejection. We're going to use Volcanic Blaze Accelerator's first effect, special summon a Volcanic Monster from our hand. Then we're going to take that monster, link it off for a copy of Relinquished Anima. Use the Graveyard effect of our shell to search for another copy of shell by paying 500 of our life. <clears throat> if I can just find it really quickly, there it is. Let's see here. 
Now there's a couple of ways we can go about this. Uh, let's go... Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch effect, sending Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. And we'll special summon herself from hand, activate her effect, to set a uh, Sinful Spoil spell trap directly from our deck to our side of the field. That will go ahead and set ourselves a copy of original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Now remember, they already have a bomb token on their field, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go Anima and Trooper. We're going to send those to Grave so we can go ahead and special summon from our deck our copy of the Greater Inari Fire. We will burn the opponent for 1,000 damage equal to the total uh, attack of that token. Then we're going to use the secondary effect of our Blaze Accelerator, sending a level 1 Pyro Monster from our deck to Grave to then destroy that token, which they'll take an additional 500 damage. Uh, we will then go ahead and use our Graveyard effect of our Rimfire, uh, banishing itself. How do I want to do this? Yeah, we'll banish itself, and then we'll send ourselves a copy of Emperor to the graveyard. So keep in mind they've already taken 1500 points of damage. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and since we no longer need our Blaze Accelerator, we can actually... Hmm. You know what? Here, why don't we do this? Let's link off the Dia Bellstar and the Greater Inari Fire. For a link to now we can't make sunlight wolf in this case because sunlight wolf requires two fires specifically so just keep that in mind uh for this combo why don't we just go for an ip mascarena here we'll trigger the graveyard effect of our greater anari fire to search our spiritual fire art trap from our deck to our hand then we're going to go ahead and utilize our copy of original sinful spoil snake eye sending our copy of volcanic blaze accelerator to our grave to then special summon a level 1 fire monster from our hand or our deck. Now this is where things can get interesting. Um, this is why we play the one snake eye oak. If you looked at the deck list, we would be summoning oak here. At this particular po point in our combo, oak effect to then uh, take a uh, level 1 fire monster that's banished or in our grave and either add it to hand or special summon it. We're going to special summon it in this case. So we're going to bring back our banished rim fire. And then what we're going to do here is we're then going to link off the Oak, the Rimfire, and the IP to make ourselves a copy of Promethean Princess. Triggering our graveyard effect of our Rimfire, this states uh, we can banish a Blaze Accelerator from our face of field or graveyard. And if we do, place a Blaze Accelerator continuous spell trap from our deck face up in our spell trap zone. So let's banish our copy of Volcanic Blaze, and then we will then place our second copy of it from our deck to our spell trap zone, bypassing its initial costs, uh, you know, requiring us to send a Blaze Accelerator. Remember, like I said earlier in the video, that um, using Rimfire's effect lets us bypass that clause. Uh, then we can do... Quite a bit here, actually, because now that we have a Promethean Princess on field, we get a free revive now of any fire, uh, which is obviously really, really strong. So we can even bring back something like a Volcanic Trooper, for example, from our grave, allowing us to then use Trooper's effects to then discard a card to then produce a bomb token on their field yet again. Uh, that puts another shell in our graveyard. And then at this point now what we can do is we can go link off Princess and Trooper to make something like a Amblo Whale. Then we're going to go ahead and use our uh, Emperor's Effect Engrave to special summon itself by banishing three Pyro Monsters. So this will be Shell, Shell... And shell, so banish all three shells. To then special out our emperor. We're going to then burn our opponent for 1500 damage. So the opponent 
they already t they have already taken 15. They're taking another 15, so they'd be at 5,000 right now. Then off the Emperor effect, we're going to go ahead and set our copy of... Inf not Inferno, excuse me. Our other Volcanic Trap. Where is it? Volcanic Emission. There it is. We can set ourselves a copy of Volcanic Emission. Although, I guess if you want to set Inferno, you can. Inferno is pretty much like an in archetype and permanence, plus an additional 500 burn. But for the purposes of this, we're going to go ahead and set Emission. Keep in mind, the opponent is at 5,000 life points currently. And then we're going to go ahead and set our copy of Kurinai. We also have a Hand Trap that will burn them as well, if that monster that we target leaves the field. And we're going to pass turn. Now, in the draw phase, we can still shotgun these. Like Emission, for example. We'll burn them for 1550, which should bring them down to, my math is, what is it going to be, 3450, I believe. So they'll be at 3450. Now, we're a couple po points away from actually FTKing them, but that's not an issue. Because if we put them down to 3450, the moment they special summon a single monster, they take 500 damage off Emperor Effect. Or we can just get them with the Ghost Mourner. If they special summon, target that monster, and then if they use that uh, card we targeted as a body for a resource or something else, they're going to take damage equal to that card's attack. So, in either case, whether they take the 500 from Emperor once, or they take damage from this, it's going to put them below the, thre the, the threshold needed in order for us to activate our Kurinai, tributing our Emperor, to then lethal them for the remaining amount of their life points. Um, so, again... This is just a test hand. It doesn't actually get you the FTK with just your own engine. You either have to rely on the Emperor Burn at least one time or use her. But again, this is just obviously a, ch a by chance that we drew this. This isn't a given that we'd have this in our hand. So realistically, you'd have to rely on the Emperor as a guarantee burn. Um, like I said, all they got to do is special summon once and then they take the damage. Uh, and then at that point, it puts them into the, the you know FTK threshold or lethal threshold at least. Uh, but on top of that, look at all the setup we also have. We have a Promethean Princess Disruption Engrave, w combined with Ambla Whale as well. Uh, we just have a lot of follow-up as well with our graveyard. You know, we have the Wanted, which I didn't even do during our combo, but I could have banished Wanted to go ahead and cycle back our Snake Eye, get a free draw as well for our Troubles. Um, and like I said, this is just a really fun deck to kind of mess around with. And this just proves to you how consistent the FDK actually is. Because even though we just did a random test hand after I pile shuffled the deck and cut it, you can still see that we opened up a line that still got us extremely close to that FTK. Granted, we're like a couple hundred points off, but the Emperor still gets us there by burning the opponent by, for 500. Just a single time would be enough to actually guarantee lethal with this, with this line. Um, so that's going to wrap up the combos and test hands for my Volcanic FTK deck list. Again, the profile is going to be linked in the description down below. If you're still watching this and you haven't smashed that subscribe button, do me a favor, help me out. Like I said, we're working our way to 1,500 subscribers, and I need your help to get there. So with that being said, this is Nick, hitting that end phase. Peace.